The Cretaceous is a geological period that lasted from about 145 to 66 million years ago. It is the third and final period of the Mesozoic era, as well as the longest. At around 79 million years, it is the longest geological period of the entire Phanerozoic. The name is derived from the Latin creta, chalk, which is abundant in the latter half of the period. It is usually abbreviated K, for its German translation cried. The Cretaceous was a period with a relatively warm climate, resulting in high eustatic sea levels that created numerous shallow inland seas. These oceans and seas were populated with now extinct marine reptiles, ammonites, and rudists, while dinosaurs continued to dominate on land. The world was ice-free, and forests extended to the poles. During this time, new groups of mammals and birds appeared. During the early Cretaceous, flowering plants appeared and began to rapidly diversify, becoming the dominant group of plants across the earth by the end of the Cretaceous. Coincident with the decline and extinction of previously widespread gymnosperm groups. The Cretaceous ended with the Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction event, a large mass extinction in which many groups, including non-avian dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and large marine reptiles, died out. The end of the Cretaceous is defined by the abrupt Cretaceous-Paleogene boundary, a geologic signature associated with the mass extinction that lies between the Mesozoic and Cenozoic eras. The Cretaceous as a separate period was first defined by Belgian geologist Jean Domalius Talloy in 1822 as the Terrain Cretace, using strata in the Paris Basin and named for the extensive beds of chalk found in the Upper Cretaceous of Western Europe. The name Cretaceous was derived from Latin creta, meaning chalk. The twofold division of the Cretaceous was implemented by Conover and Phillips in 1822. Alcide d'Orbigny in 1840 divided the French Cretaceous into five adages, the Neocomian, Aption, Albion, Turonian, and Sanyanian, later adding the Ergonian between Neocomian and Aption and the Cenomanian between the Albion and Turonian. The Cretaceous is divided into early and late Cretaceous epochs, or lower and upper Cretaceous series. In older literature, the Cretaceous is sometimes divided into three series, Neocomian, Gallic and Sanyanian. A subdivision in twelve stages, all originating from European stratigraphy, is now used worldwide. In many parts of the world, alternative local subdivisions are still in use. From youngest to oldest, the subdivisions of the Cretaceous period are, the impact of a meteorite or comet is today widely accepted as the main reason for the Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction event. The lower boundary of the Cretaceous is currently undefined, and the Jurassic-Cretaceous boundary is currently the only system boundary to lack a defined global boundary stratotype section and point. Placing a GSSP for this boundary has been difficult because of the strong regionality of most biostratigraphic markers, and lack of any chemostratigraphic events, such as isotope excursions, that could be used to define or correlate a boundary. Calpionellids, an enigmatic group of planktonic protists with urn-shaped calcitic tests briefly abundant during the latest Jurassic to earliest. Cretaceous, have been suggested to represent the most promising candidates for fixing the Jurassic-Cretaceous boundary in particular. The first appearance Calpionella alpina, coinciding with the base of the eponymous alpina subzone, has been proposed as the definition of the base of the Cretaceous. The working definition for the boundary has often been placed as the first appearance of the Ammonite Strambergella jacobi, formerly placed in the genus Bariaceae. But its use as a stratigraphic indicator has been questioned, as its first appearance does not correlate with that of C. alpina. The boundary is officially considered to be approximately 145 million years ago by the International Commission on Stratigraphy, but other estimates have been proposed based on UPB geochronology, ranging as young as 140 million years ago. The upper boundary of the Cretaceous is sharply defined, being placed at an iridium-rich layer found worldwide that is believed to be associated with the Chicxulub impact crater. With its boundary circumscribing parts of the Yucatan Peninsula and into the Gulf of Mexico. This layer has been dated at 66.043 Maya. At the end of the Cretaceous, the impact of a large body with the Earth may have been the punctuation mark at the end of a progressive decline in biodiversity during the Maastrichtian age. The result was the extinction of three-quarters of Earth's plant and animal species. The impact created the sharp break known as KPG boundary. Earth's biodiversity required substantial time to recover from this event, despite the probable existence of an abundance of vacant ecological niches. Despite the severity of KPG extinction event, significant variability in the rate of extinction occurred between and within different clitties. 
species that depended on photosynthesis declined or became extinct as atmospheric particles blocked solar energy. As is the case today, photosynthesizing organisms, such as phytoplankton and land plants, formed the primary part of the food chain in the late Cretaceous, and all else that depended on them suffered, as well. Herbivorous animals, which depended on plants and plankton as their food, died out as their food sources became scarce, consequently, the top predators, such as Tyrannosaurus rex, also perished. Yet only three major groups of tetrapods disappeared completely, the non-avian dinosaurs, the plesiosaurs and the pterosaurs. The other Cretaceous groups that did not survive into the Cenozoic era, the ichthyosaurs and last remaining temnospondyles and non-mammalian cynodonts were already extinct millions of years before the event occurred. Coccolithophards and mollusks, including ammonites, rudists, freshwater snails, and mussels, as well as organisms whose food chain included these shell builders, became extinct or suffered heavy losses. For example, ammonites are thought to have been the principal food of mosasaurs, a group of giant marine reptiles that became extinct at the boundary. Omnivores, insectivores, and carrion eaters survived the extinction event, perhaps because of the increased availability of their food sources. At the end of the Cretaceous, there seemed to have been no purely herbivorous or carnivorous mammals. Mammals and birds that survived the extinction fed on insects, larvae, worms, and snails, which in turn fed on dead plant and animal matter. Scientists theorized that these organisms survived the collapse of plant-based food chains because they fed on detritus. In stream communities, few groups of animals became extinct. Stream communities rely less on food from living plants and more on detritus that washes in from land. This particular ecological niche buffered them from extinction. Similar, but more complex patterns have been found in the oceans. Extinction was more severe among animals living in the water column, than among animals living on or in the seafloor. Animals in the water column are almost entirely dependent on primary production from living phytoplankton, while animals living on or in the ocean floor feed on detritus or can switch to detritus feeding. The largest air-breathing survivors of the event, crocodilians and champsosaurs, were semi-aquatic and had access to detritus. Modern crocodilians can live as scavengers and can survive for months without food and go into hibernation when conditions are unfavorable, and their young are small. Grow slowly and feed largely on invertebrates and dead organisms or fragments of organisms for their first few years. These characteristics have been linked to crocodilian survival at the end of the Cretaceous. Drawing of fossil jaws of Mosasaurus hoffmanni, from the Maastrichtian of Dutch Limburg, by Dutch geologist Peter Harding Sipionix, a theropod dinosaur. From the early Cretaceous of Italy the high sea level and warm climate of the Cretaceous met large areas of the continents were covered by warm. Shallow seas, providing habitat for many marine organisms. The Cretaceous was named for the extensive chalk deposits of this age in Europe, but in many parts of the world, the deposits from the Cretaceous are of marine limestone, a rock type that is formed under warm, shallow marine conditions. Due to the high sea level, there was extensive space for such sedimentation. Because of the relatively young age and great thickness of the system, Cretaceous rocks are evident in many areas worldwide. Chalk is a rock type characteristic for the Cretaceous. It consists of coccoliths, microscopically small calcite skeletons of coccolithophores, a type of algae that prospered in the Cretaceous seas. Stagnation of deep sea currents in middle Cretaceous times caused anoxic conditions in the sea water leaving the deposited organic matter undecomposed. Half of the world's petroleum reserves were laid down at this time in the anoxic conditions of what would become the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Mexico. In many places around the world, dark anoxic shales were formed during this interval, such as the Mancos Shale of western North America. These shales are an important source rock for oil and gas, for example in the subsurface of the North Sea. Europe and northwestern Europe, chalk deposits from the Upper Cretaceous are characteristic for the chalk group, which forms the White Cliffs of Dover on the south coast of England and similar cliffs on the French Normandine coast. The group is found in England, northern France, the Low Countries, northern Germany, Denmark and in the subsurface of the southern part of the North Sea. Chalk is not easily consolidated, and the chalk group still consists of loose sediments in many places. The group also has other limestones and aronites. Among the fossils it contains are sea urchins, belemnites, ammonites and sea reptiles such as Mosasaurus. In southern Europe, the Cretaceous is usually a marine system consisting of competent limestone beds or incompetent marls. 
because the alpine mountain chains did not yet exist in the Cretaceous, these deposits formed on the southern edge of the European continental shelf, at the margin of the Tethys Ocean. North America Map of North America During the late Cretaceous During the Cretaceous, the present North American continent was isolated from the other continents. In the Jurassic, the North Atlantic already opened, leaving a proto-ocean between Europe and North America. From north to south across the continent, the western interior seaway started forming. This inland sea separated the elevated areas of Laramidia in the west and Appalachia in the east. Three dinosaur clitis found in Laramidia are absent from Appalachia from the Coniation through the Maastrichtian. During the Cretaceous, the late Paleozoic to early Mesozoic supercontinent of Pangaea completed its tectonic breakup into the present-day continents, although their positions were substantially different at the time. As the Atlantic Ocean widened, the convergent margin mountain building that had begun during the Jurassic continued in the North American Cordillera, as the Nevadan orogeny was followed by the Sevier and Laramide orogenies. Gondwana had begun to break up during the Jurassic period, but its fragmentation accelerated during the Cretaceous and was largely complete by the end of the period. South America, Antarctica and Australia rifted away from Africa, thus, the South Atlantic and Indian Oceans were newly formed. Such active rifting lifted great undersea mountain chains along the welts, raising eustatic sea levels worldwide. To the north of Africa the Tethys Sea continued to narrow. During the most of the late Cretaceous, North America would be divided in two by the Western Interior Seaway, a large interior sea, separating Laramidia to the west and Appalachia to the east. Then receded late in the period, leaving thick marine deposits sandwiched between coal beds. At the peak of the Cretaceous transgression, one-third of Earth's present land area was submerged. The Cretaceous is justly famous for its chalk, indeed, more chalk formed in the Cretaceous than in any other period in the Phanerozoic. Mid-ocean ridge activity, or rather, the circulation of seawater through the enlarged ridges, enriched the oceans in calcium, this made the oceans more saturated, as well as increased the bioavailability of the element for calcareous nanoplankton. These widespread carbonates and other sedimentary deposits make the Cretaceous rock record especially fine. Famous formations from North America include the rich marine fossils of Kansas's Smoky Hill chalk member and the terrestrial fauna of the late Cretaceous Hell Creek Formation. Other important Cretaceous exposures occur in Europe and China. In the area that is now India, massive lava beds called the Deccan Traps were erupted in the very late Cretaceous and early Paleocene. The cooling trend of the last epoch of the Jurassic continued into the first age of the Cretaceous. There is evidence that snowfalls were common in the higher latitudes, and the tropics became wetter than during the Triassic and Jurassic. Glaciation was however restricted to high-latitude mountains, though seasonal snow may have existed farther from the poles. Rafting by ice of stones into marine environments occurred during much of the Cretaceous, but evidence of deposition directly from glaciers is limited to the early Cretaceous of the Aramanga Basin in southern Australia. A computer simulated model of surface conditions in Middle Cretaceous, 100 Maya, displaying the approximate shoreline and calculated isotherms after the end of the first stage. However, temperatures increased again, and these conditions were almost constant until the end of the period. The warming may have been due to intense volcanic activity which produced large quantities of carbon dioxide. Between 70 and 69 Ma and 66 to 65 Ma, Isotopic ratios indicate elevated atmospheric CO2 pressures with levels of 1,000 to 1,400 ppmv and mean annual temperatures in West Texas between 21 and 23 degrees Celsius. Atmospheric CO2 and temperature relations indicate a doubling of peak O2 was accompanied by a 0. 6 degrees Celsius increase in temperature. The production of large quantities of magma, variously attributed to mantle plumes or to extensional tectonics, further pushed sea levels up so that large areas of the continental crust were covered with shallow seas. The Tethys Sea connecting the tropical oceans east to west also helped to warm the global climate. Warm adapted plant fossils are known from localities as far north as Alaska and Greenland, while dinosaur fossils have been found within 15 degrees of the Cretaceous South Pole. It was suggested that there was Antarctic marine glaciation in the Turonian Age, based on isotopic evidence. However, this has subsequently been suggested to be the result of inconsistent isotopic proxies, with evidence of polar rainforests. During this time interval at 82 degrees south. A very gentle temperature gradient from the equator to the poles meant weaker global winds. Which drive the ocean currents, resulted in less upwelling and more stagnant oceans than today. This is evidenced by widespread black shale deposition and frequent anoxic events. 
Sediment cores show that tropical sea surface temperatures may have briefly been as warm as 42 degrees Celsius, 17 degrees Celsius warmer than at present, and that they averaged around 37 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, deep ocean temperatures were as much as 15 to 20 degrees Celsius warmer than today's. Facsimile of a fossil of Archifructus from the Yixian Formation, China flowering plants make up around 90% of living plant species today. Prior to the rise of angiosperms, during the Jurassic and the early Cretaceous, the higher flora was dominated by gymnosperm groups, including cycads, conifers, ginkophytes, nephites and close relatives, as well as the extinct venetotales. Other groups of plants included pteridosperms or seed ferns, a collective term to refer to disparate groups of fern-like plants that produce seeds, including groups such as Choristospermaceae and Chidoniales. The exact origins of angiosperms are uncertain, although molecular evidence suggests that they are not closely related to any living group of gymnosperms. The earliest widely accepted evidence of flowering plants are monosulcate pollen grains from the late Valanginian found in Israel, and Italy, initially at low abundance. Molecular clock estimates conflict with fossil estimates, suggesting the diversification of crown group angiosperms during the Upper Triassic or Jurassic, but such estimates are difficult to reconcile with the heavily sampled pollen record and the distinctive triculpate to triculparoidate pollen of eudicot angiosperms. Among the oldest records of angiosperm macrofossils are Monsecchia from the Boremian aged Las Hoyas beds of Spain and Archifructus from the Boremian Aption boundary Yixian formation in China. Triculpate pollen distinctive of eudicots first appears in the late Boremian, while the earliest remains of monocots are known from the Aption. Flowering plants underwent a rapid radiation beginning during the Middle Cretaceous, becoming the dominant group of land plants by the end of the period, coincident with the decline of previously dominant groups such as conifers. The oldest known fossils of grasses are from the Albion, with the family having diversified into modern groups by the end of the Cretaceous. The oldest large angiosperm trees are known from the Turonian of New Jersey, with the trunk having a preserved diameter of 1.8 meters and an estimated height of 50 meters. During the Cretaceous, polypodiles ferns, which make up 80% of living fern species, would also begin to diversify. On land, mammals were generally small-sized, but a very relevant component of the fauna, with somalodont multituberculates outnumbering dinosaurs in some sites. Neither true marsupials nor placentals existed until the very end, but a variety of non-marsupial metatherians and non-placental eutherians had already begun to diversify greatly. Ranging as carnivores, aquatic foragers and herbivores. Various archaic groups like eutriconodonts were common in the early Cretaceous, but by the late Cretaceous northern mammalian faunas were dominated by multituberculates and therians, with dry lestoids dominating South America. The apex predators were archosaurian reptiles, especially dinosaurs, which were at their most diverse stage. Pterosaurs were common in the early and middle Cretaceous, but as the Cretaceous proceeded they declined for poorly understood reasons, once thought to be due to competition with early birds. But now it is understood avian adaptive radiation is not consistent with pterosaur decline, and by the end of the period only two highly specialized families remained. The Liaoning Lagerstad in China is a treasure chest of preserved remains of numerous types of small dinosaurs, birds and mammals, that provides a glimpse of life in the early Cretaceous. The Coelurosaur dinosaurs found there represent types of the group Maneraptera, which includes modern birds and their closest non-avian relatives, such as Dromaeosaurs, Oviraptorosaurs, Therizinosaurs, Trudonids along with other avialans. Fossils of these dinosaurs from the Liaoning Lagerstad are notable for the presence of hair-like feathers. Insects diversified during the Cretaceous, and the oldest known ants, termites and some lepidopterans, akin to butterflies and moths, appeared. Aphids, grasshoppers and gall wasps appeared. Derasmosaurus piatroi, a rhynchocephalian from the late early Cretaceous of Italy rhynchocephalians disappeared from North America and Europe after the early Cretaceous, and were absent from North Africa and northern South America by the early late Cretaceous. The cause of the decline of rhynchocephalia remains unclear, but has often been suggested to be due to competition with advanced lizards and mammals. They appear to have remained diverse in high-latitude southern South America during the late Cretaceous, where lizards remained rare, with their remains outnumbering terrestrial lizards 200 to 1. Fully Drosaurus, a choristodier from the early Cretaceous of China choristodiers, a group of freshwater aquatic reptiles that first appeared during the preceding. Jurassic, underwent a major evolutionary radiation in Asia during the early Cretaceous, which represents the high point of choristodiar in diversity. 
including long-necked forms such as Hyphalosaurus and the first records of the Gurio-like Neocorostatera, which appear to have evolved in the regional absence of aquatic Neosuchian crocodiliformes. During the late Cretaceous the Neocoristodere champsosaurus was widely distributed across western North America. In the seas, rays, modern sharks and teleosts became common. Marine reptiles included ichthyosaurs in the early and mid-Cretaceous, plesiosaurs throughout the entire period, and mosasaurs appearing in the late Cretaceous. Baculites, an ammonite genus with a straight shell, flourished in the seas along with reef-building rutus clams. The Hesperonithiforms were flightless, marine diving birds that swam like grebes. Globotruncanid foraminifera and echinoderms such as sea urchins and starfish thrived. The first radiation of the diatoms in the oceans occurred during the Cretaceous, freshwater diatoms did not appear until the Miocene. The Cretaceous was also an important interval in the evolution of bioerosion, the production of borings and scrapings in rocks, hardgrounds and shells. Thanks for watching.